We are the Outlaws and Scholars Podcast. When two seemingly contrasting worlds collide, the world of outlaws and the world of scholars, there's something appealing about the rebel. The rebel is dangerous. Squat down like the little bitch you are and talk shit. If you want to talk shit, stand up like a man, motherfucker, and talk shit. But you feel safe in his presence. And the intellectual is also appealing. It may seem harmless from the outset, but when you hear him speak, you get a glimpse of just how formidable that man is. You don't get freedom peacefully. Freedom is never uh, safeguarded peacefully. Anyone who is depriving you of freedom isn't deserving of, an, of a peaceful approach uh, by the ones who are being deprived of their freedom. Neither one is someone that you want to fuck with. It's time to question everything that you believe. Here is the starting point to the journey of finding your answers. Enjoy the show. All right, today we have a very special guest. This person is someone I've had the pleasure of knowing for a few years now. Every one of my encounters and interactions with this person has been very positive. Some people, when they enter a room, they just lighten up the place. That's what Jabril does. So meet Jubril Ogoro. Jubril has a show called Passport Heavy in which he goes around the world and show people how to travel and enjoy life at the fullest on whatever budget that they're on. His show is probably the best travel show there is. And I love travel shows, I love to travel. Um, he curates the vibes. Not only that, but he actually teaches people. He has a whole program in which he teaches people how to travel and enjoy these experiences on whatever budget you're at. That's important. And because a lot of times you may see someone traveling, doing this and a third and think that, damn, that's out of my reach. I don't have that kind of money. But he shows you that you can do it on any type of budget, which is super dope. He's not the type of person that just throws his lifestyle in your face. He shows you how you can have that same type of lifestyle or have that same level of fun or, or experience on whatever budget you're at. So today, we not only talk about all of his business endeavors, but we also talk about the fact that he is a digital nomad. And there's been a rise of digital nomads uh, over the past 10 years. And these are people who can set up shop anywhere in the world and get busy and make money, earn income. And typically, especially if you're American, when you go to these other places, your dollar goes a lot further, all right? Even have me thinking about maybe a Columbia uh, stand or something like that. But anyway, I really want you guys to enjoy this episode. Take out your pen and paper and take notes because he's dropping a lot of gems, all right? So, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Passport Heavy, Mr. Good Vibes, Good Energy, Jabril Ogoro. How I found you was Passport Heavy, yeah. which is the best shit I've ever seen as far as a travel uh, show, mm -hmm. right? And I, and I literally put it up there with Bourdain, if not better, you know? And um, uh, uh, your, your, your team is fucking incredible, bro. Yes. The, the, the editing, the shots, the music, the transitions, everything is just is very appealing to the senses. Yeah. And then you're at dope places. And what I love about what you was doing, you was putting people up on game. On, like you said, all right, look, you don't have to do it at the Jay-Z level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you, broke, you gave multiple options on how they can do it in an affordable manner, right? Because look, this is, this is real. As far as I, I, as far as I know, this is all we got. This life right here. You know what I'm saying? And it'd be a shame to go through this life slaving away at some job, never experiencing the world. You know what I'm saying? So, what you do? Some people may look at travel as leisure, whatever. Like, no, that is very important. Mm -hmm. It's very healthy for the mind, for and for your experiences and for your mental health, right? And you're literally giving people a fucking cheat code. Mm -hmm. on how to fly <laughs> yeah. to, to dope ass spots yeah. how to get the good rates on the rooms the the ubers that i mean not the ubers but the the tour road or airbnb yeah. whatever and it's 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 like bro that's such a that's such an angelic thing that you do you yeah. know what i'm saying i think it's a, a real in essence altruistic even though it's a business of yours mm -hmm. you are helping so many people be able to do things that they didn't think they can do you know do you have do you have like a curriculum in which you can really take show people the A to Z on how to travel within their means to go wherever they want to go? Yeah, absolutely. And I do feel it's a huge value because for me, it's kind of like when I 
when I started flying, I was flying economy, right? Mm -hmm. And I'd walk by the people in first class. Don't look at and them. And I'm like, motherfuckers, <laughs> they choke on their champagne. <laughs> just, you know, they look at yeah. all comfortable and happy. Yeah. And yeah. Do your little shuffle to the back. They're annoyed by you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you can't use this bathroom. Of you. That's your bathroom back there. Right? And so I wanted, as I started to travel, I've been traveling for 13 years nonstop mm -hmm. all around the world. Right. Stayed in over 200 different Airbnbs, hundreds, maybe even a thousand different hotels. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen all the good, the bad. I've, I've fumbled. And people were looking. I realized I had to take a step back and see how I felt in the beginning and said I didn't look realistic mm -hmm. to, you know, to me. Right. And so I have to break that things down in a step-by-step -step formula that people are like, oh, I actually can do that. And I realized because I've been doing this 13 years nonstop, I have a different level of experience. Right. Um, you have so not, and you, I just want to clarify, yeah. it's not that you just been happen to be traveling for 13 years, mm -hmm. but on a high level. Mm -hmm. So you have expert experience with it. Exactly. And so, for example, like the Airbnb, mm. uh, it might be listed for two hundred fifty dollars um, a night. So, actually, going to give you some actionable advice. So, when you're on Airbnb right now, for the places that you're going, let's say you're doing a three four day trip, uh, and you're like, "Hey, I'm pulling up to Miami or Montana or Columbia, wherever you are going in the world," and it's listed at two hundred dollars a night, and so eight hundred bucks for the um, for the four nights and then you say this is the message that I actually send to hosts to get money off so I'm going to say hey your place is beautiful I would love to stay there but it's slightly outside of my budget would you be willing to do you know 600 bucks right so like 25% off and if I look at their calendar you can see their calendar and how many bookings that they have and then I might even push for 40, 50 percent off, just depending on how busy that they are. And then I will message probably about 10 different properties. And then I will say probably three out of the 10 will actually respond positively. And then on Airbnb, it's called something called special offer. And they'll be like, OK, great. Um, go ahead and book it. And it does work better if you do it closer to the date that you're going, right? Because an empty room for them mean no revenue. And this is something that a lot of people don't know. And I was realizing, for me, I stay in places sometimes at $1,000, $1,500 a night, $2,000 a night. And then I get them for like, if it's 2000 a lot of times I can might go get it for $1,200. And then you adding that up, staying there for three, four, you spend, you saving thousands. And I do this on the regular. The first time that I did a video about NAD3, I called it the fountain of youth. The reason why I'm talking about all of this, okay? And that reason is NAD3. And specifically NAD. NAD3 is a product, right? We call it the fountain of youth. And some people, got their panties in a bunch the problem with these people is they lack imagination and creativity now listen the neocortex and the thalamus is where our imagination creativity and our consciousness resides that's what makes us human that's the most advanced region of the brain unfortunately some people just don't access that region they're stuck in the functions of the limbic system the limbic system is considered the reptile brain is ancient it's primitive it's purely instinctual. Now, let's go back to my initial statement. I said that our product, NAD3, is the fountain of youth. And I stand by that product. I know it's bold, but it's true. Anything that the human mind can imagine is real and it does come to fruition. These ideas and concepts get developed over time, produced and then introduced to the world. Think about when the Wright brothers told people that they could fly. People laughed, they ridiculed them, ostracized them. Innovation is never well received in the beginning because people fear progress. People have a fixed mindset, so the idea of a thought that seems impossible becoming possible is just so hard for some people to fathom. But we have so many innovations that at some point they were impossible but are now normal in our everyday lives. I mean, check this out. Right now, you're looking at me through your phone. 
You're looking at a two-dimensional version of me that appears to be three-dimensional. You hear me and you see me like as if I'm standing right in front of you, but I'm not. I could be thousands of miles away from you. And this is not even live. This was recorded a long time ago. This is pure magic to people 50 years ago, but it's normal now. We're literally living in the future. We have so much information at our disposal, so many resources we could use to innovate and create. And listen, we've created the fountain of youth. Now I'm 45 years old. I've recently taken an epigenetic age test and the results showed that my biological age is 29 years old. Now I'm sure that some of that comes from me having fairly decent genetics, but most of it is a result of my training, my nutrition, and also this product that I use right here called NAD3. See that? I've been taking this for years, consistently. NAD is nicotinamide adenine dinonucleotide. I know that's a tongue twister, but that's what NAD is. What it is is a coenzyme that's essential to metabolism. Every living cell has it, but it decreases as we age. When you have low amounts in the body, it leads to our chromosomes becoming damaged by our telomeres shrinking. When telomeres shrink, we're more likely to develop cancers, disease, and overall fast track to death. So some of the things that decrease our NAD levels are aging, overeating, also eating processed foods, stress, smoking, alcohol, and pollution. There's many more, but those are the main things. But listen, I know it sounds bleak, but there's hope. Now, there's more than hope. There's a solution. Now, a recent study from Stanford University cited that an adequate amount of NAD in the body extends the length of telomeres and it literally reverses aging in cells in humans. You hear what I said? It literally reverses the aging cycle in our cells. When our cells age and die and get damaged, we die. This reverses the aging process in cells, which in turn, reverses the aging process in us. Now it's not drastic, but it's something. Training, 100%. Optimizing your nutrition, 100%. Meditation, 100%. But also taking NAD exogenously, that's the vibe right there. Now, there's two ways to do this. One is by IV, which is a very effective way. However, it's not really practical for most people. One, it takes a long time. It takes, it could take an hour up to two hours, depending on how fast you have the drip go into your arm. Now, the faster you have to go in, you're gonna feel nauseous, okay? So, outside of that, it also costs a thousand dollars every time you sit down to get it done. Like I said, not practical for most people. The second alternative is our alternative. It's our product, NAD3, you see? You can take it as a supplement every day. I've been taking it for years. My father has been taking it for years. If you can see, my father's 75 years old. He's still the picture of health. Speaks clear, talks clear, mind is sharp, and he's physically active. I blame a lot of that on NAD3, okay? Everyone in my family takes it. This is a manifestation of a thought that was in someone's head, an idea that sounded crazy, right? Research, development, research, development, refinement, bam, brought it to the market and it's here and it works and it's powerful. Now, what you can do is click the link below. We've attached research papers, published studies so you can see the effectiveness of N83. You don't have to take my word for it. I let the experts tell you themselves. All right. Much love, y'all. You know, I do nothing but stand behind the best and put the best out. So keep rocking with your boy. And let's live long, fruitful lives. All right, we out of here. Peace. Or it's like flying first class. A lot of times I pay economy prices and fly first class, right? So like even my flight from Miami to um, to LA mm -hmm. came out here for your birthday. Right, thank you, <laughs> right? thank you, thank you, appreciate it. I paid $200 for my flight. What? Right? But it was like an $1,800 one-way first class. Wow. But I, I got upgraded because of the status, right, where, and that's like stuff that I go into. People are like, oh, I don't really understand that. Or if it is um, hotels. Don't like, give them all the sauce. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Don't give them all. Look, you earned, you earned the ability to teach these things. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So let them, look, my man, what is it called? Uh, I have a new company. It's called Travel Mastery, where we have a community of, like, dope people, where we show people 
everything that you want to know about travel mm -hmm. start to finish. Mm -hmm. And then we also have like a free web class where I break down so much in detail. We're like, oh, thank you. I didn't know that about travel. Mm -hmm. It's because I want people to be out there experiencing these things how, that they didn't know possible. How often do you do the free webinar? Um, it's available every week. Okay. Every week. So, so so they can watch, they can tap in right now. They can tap in right now. All right, first link down below. Yeah, yeah they're going to see the link right here. If it pops up, yeah. they can see it. Okay, that's that's a bet. So what kind of stuff do you go over? Um, hotels, five-star hotels for mm. like three-star prices. Oh, man. You yeah. talk, you're talking my language. <laughs> you're talking my language right now. Right? Because yeah. thing, no matter how much money you make, Nobody want to pay more nah. than they have to pay. And then, and and when I travel, I'm bringing people with me. Mm -hmm. So, and I think hotels is the biggest expense of everything. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? If I could mitigate that, that'd be great. I'd be more places. You right. know what I mean? And that is, that's the beauty of it for me is I was experiencing these things. People were like, man, how is he out all the time doing it? I was like, because I'm not paying right. what y'all paying. Yeah. Or it's like a, I go first class from to London. Like one way, a lot of times that could be like eight grand, mm -hmm. but I'm paying a thousand, mm -hmm. right? And then all these things add up over time. And I was like, yo, people are always asking me, so let me put it in a curriculum that people can actually follow and a community because that's the other big thing that I wanted when I was traveling is to be with like-minded people. Mm -hmm. So for example, let's say we go into Cabo and you, you, you there with your lady by yourself and you're like, ah, it's not, you know, two grand to take the yacht out for four hours. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, I don't necessarily want to spend the whole two grand, but you like go in the group and say, Yo, anyone else here in Cabo, I want to go out. And now you're like, and then three other couples are like, and you know they're on a similar mindset, mm, okay. wavelength. They come out, not everyone paying 500 and you have a dope group that That's, you're going out with, right. right, during this time. Because no matter, people like to stun everything, yeah. but money and budget matters. Oh, 100%. You, <laughs> and so, you got to be wise with your money. So... In your in your program, do you give people access to your community? Yeah, absolutely. So so they'll have the people the message when they're in. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, that's dope. Yeah. That's incredible. I need to tap in. Yeah. I need to tap in, baby. Because <laughs> look, is, there is a lot of times that I want to do certain things. It is more fun with a group, a small mm -hmm. group, other couples or whatever. You know what I mean? And then if you're splitting expense, uh, splitting splitting the expenses, it yeah. makes it even that much better. Do you do? Um, do you get into like like trap like? Uh, PJs, private jets? No, like no. I don't. I don't talk about private jets because I don't fly private. Okay. So um, something maybe down the line. And then shout out to um, we're actually having conversations right now with uh, PJ Kevin, his whole shout. Team. That's the homie right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like they trying to get me, you know, to come out and do a few things. But for me, I'm always like, if I'm not doing it. I can't talk about it. Everything that we mm. talk about, and a shout out to my partner, um, Nathan. Uh, he's, uh, he's out of New Zealand. He's been traveling for seven. He used to be a student of mine, now mm. a partner in that business. But if we've done it and we know about it and we're bringing on more instructors to talk about other Experts, you know, yeah. specialized. So like, you know, he can talk about PJs mm -hmm. a lot better than me. And there's so many different things that I don't know. Right. And so we're expanding or it's like, long-term living we and so the community is ever evolving so right now with for example being a a digital nomad most people like i was just doing like i won't lie i think i spent i was in miami it's like yeah, i just spent like 25 grand mm -hmm. just, right. just just having fun in yeah, two yeah. weeks in, in, yeah. in miami and when i'm in Colombia. So, for example, let's say a, a regular bottle of Don Julio. I'm not talking about the 1942, like the one that's fifty dollars in the store, uh -huh. right? That one, you go out in Colombia, that bottle is eighty dollars in a top-notch spot, like a beautiful spot, to about a hundred thirty, hundred forty dollars, depending U on the U.S. Spot. U.S. Right now, you go out in L.A. or Miami, where the dollars. bottle is five, six hundred yeah. plus tip. Plus tax, you're right. paying like seven, eight hundred. Right. And on a smaller scale, right? If you're not doing, I, I'm gonna. When I first started traveling, I had no idea about places like Southeast Asia and Latin America mm. was safe. The internet is good. There's a lot of um, international community as right. far as local learning these different cultures. And that's another thing I love to share is 
if you're working remote, like let's say you're working for whatever company, you're making 80 grand a year, mm. and you work, but you like struggling to survive in the US, right? right. Like in LA or whatever, you in New York, Miami, and you want to live a good life, you're going to have to really budget if right. you're making 80 grand a year. Right. Um, but out there, your money goes like four times, five times further. And the lifestyle is just as good, if not better. Right. So if you're making 80, let's times about four. Now you're doing, it's like the equivalent of making 320 grand. Right. And it just changes. I've seen so many people pay off their student loans. They're doing, they just living a better lifestyle. So let me break, let me break this down. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so listen up, y'all. I'm digesting what you're giving me right now. <laughs> let's say easy math. You make 100 grand. Yeah. Let's say you live in around here in okay. Orange County. You have a one bedroom apartment. It's going to be about three three thousand three thousand thirty five hundred, yeah. right? Your car is going to be I don't know maybe a thousand dollars a month. Um, and you're making what uh, twenty a month or something? No, ten a month. Yeah, ten. Like eight, yeah, like eight thousand, eight thousand. Yeah. A month. Okay. So just your your apartment and your car alone, it's almost half. Half. That is half. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more than half, actually. So then you have, you know, gas, food, insurance, all of these things. So living here, making a hundred grand a year, is nothing. You're not, you're not making much at all. Mm -hmm. You could go to like, let's say, Columbia, right? Yeah. What's a nice apartment or a house to rent? Right so like you? equivalent, like so like a one bedroom with like a doorman. Mm -hmm. uh, like a gym in the building, mm -hmm. pool, like super fresh. You walk right. in, you're like, oh, this is nice. Yeah, like, like yeah. you know, you feel real comfortable. Nice little rooftop. Right. Um, that vibe. You're probably gonna be at like seven hundred fifty dollars a month, maybe. I've never even, bro. The last time I heard of any kind of rent being under a thousand is I was, when I was in college. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. years ago. Yeah. That doesn't exist in the United States. Yeah, so I, I'll, I'll give you a full breakdown to, to kind of understand what lifestyle and the cost would be. So let's even take it up to a thousand for your, your one bedroom in a beautiful place. Um, there you, you could Uber everywhere. So a equivalent, like a 20 minute Uber, like I, we just you say Uber X, we're not going to go Lux or whatever. Mm -hmm. Regular Uber X, 20 minutes um, in LA, like 15 bucks. Right, 15, 20 bucks, 20. Um, nah, Uber X, probably about 30 something for 20 right? minutes. Like, yeah, like 20, 20 bucks, 20. Like, okay. Let's, let's just call it Everything 20, is inflated here. 15 minutes, right? Yeah. Uh, that same Uber in Colombia, same kind of brand new, whatever, 20, yeah. 20 vehicle, clean, yeah. efficient, would be about $3. $3 for wow. the Uber, right? And then, so transportation, you could. And if you wanted to take a bus, but like, um, yeah. but like U Uber, right. um, you living good. Three dollars for Uber, fifteen minutes, and a lot of places you can get to in like fifteen. Mm -hmm. But like I say, you're going let six bucks. Right. Then um, an Uber. Other main costs that people like to do: going out to eat for mm -hmm. a dinner. Let's say you take in, um, you know, a, a nice lady out for dinner um, at a spot where it's fresh. L.A. I mean, and you have a couple drinks. So you have two drinks each. You got a, a main course, an appetizer. Mm -hmm. you you probably looking in L.A. at a nice spot where it's like, oh, you know, she's taking a little Instagram picture. Right, right, right. Uh, 250 300 Easy. Um, in L.A. with tip there, 80 bucks mm -hmm. for the same. If not, it looks better, mm -hmm. right? So entertainment and going out is so much easier. Me, I have a, a full-time uh, housekeeper and maid. Mm -hmm. um, at the house, right? And then also a chef, you know, full-time at the house. So comes it, because uh, I wake up a little bit later, uh, or I, I, I don't break my fast later, so she don't need to come right. so early. So stays from, like, 10 a.m. and leaves at, like, 5, 5 mm -hmm. or 6. And that's every day. So I have hotel service in my crib. Wow. Right? So my sheets are made, laundry, everything just always look, I don't have to worry about it. Right. Take a guess how... How much that costs for a full time person? A month. So uh, a cook and a maid, mm -hmm. right? Full time, three grand? No. Two? So minimum wage in Colombia, right, is, is 250 right, um, a month. But like, she's amazing and she does great. Mm -hmm. So I pay her 500 double. Like, 
Wow. And, and she's super $500. happy. $500. $500 a month. And it helps ease my mind of I can work, I can do whatever. Everything is just set. Right. Um, and, you know, and she make uh, lunch and dinner. So th- that's incredible. So a huge re- this is really smart. So a huge reason why people like yourself exist, digital nomads, some people think like, man, these people are just lucky they get to travel. But you're actually saving a lot of money by traveling bro you're saving I, so much money by traveling I, I save so much money it's when i come back to the u.s and I'm, my lifestyle don't change so it's, it's very like, expensive <laughs> look my 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 expenses are very high yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's a premium you know what i mean mm-hmm. i'm fortunate you know because my expenses is a lot more than what a lot of people would are making right yeah. but it, it does wear me down sometimes like yeah. damn it's always yeah, shelling out money just, always shelling out money you know, and I say people live smarter. You know, it's like we, we live in, in a global economy, um, and it's a beautiful. There's beautiful cultures around the world. There's so many misrepresented cultures, and so I, I, I genuinely love the people of Colombia. Like they real good people, and it's safe, safe. It's safe, and so that's the thing. You know, obviously you have all the documentaries, and people only know what they see all the time. The right? marketing. So when people. Yeah typically think about Colombia, you know, you got, you know, narcos, um, and, and the thing about Colombia right now, um, like low key or <laughs> is like, they, I mean, obviously they still sell Coke. They still mm. do everything, That's, but yeah. you know, we number one consumer in the U S but the thing that they do now that they didn't do before is they don't go crazy with the violence. So they have almost like a peace treaty with um you know with the high or it's like yo i'll do your thing whatever let let's keep this a beautiful safe place right and and yeah it's it's, it's perfectly safe i feel safer how's the coke there is it is it good i've never i'll fuck with you yeah, <laughs> I was like, I've how's ne- the coke <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah i've never tried it that but um i know a lot of people that have and, mm. and they say <laughs> they, yeah. they say it's great it's highly so, recommend it yeah. Yelp reviews is pretty yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> Some good Yelp reviews. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. It'd be funny if they did. Yeah. But no, nah, bro, this is fucking my head up right now. Because I'm thinking about myself. Yeah. When I, when I, no bullshit, bro. Whenever you're in a different country, because yeah. my man's always somewhere, fly too. I'm thinking, oh, he's just doing his thing. But you're living way better. And at a better rate than than mm-hmm. out here, you're saving so much money. Yeah, the internet's good, safety, transportation's easy, um, and there's so many different places, right? Like I lived in Bali for mm-hmm. you know a few years. I've lived in Thailand. I've lived in. What's uh, your favorite? I do like I do like Medellin, Colombia. Um, from the food, the culture. Do you ever miss being in the states, though? The thing I like about the states when I come back mm. is I feel it's the I'm a, I'm a competitor, right? Mm. And so I like to be around other yeah. alphas that go, are doing things yeah. on a on a really big level, yeah. and so it motivate me yeah. to like, oh, I gotta go harder, I gotta go do more. Sometimes you can get real comfortable yeah. in in a place like Colombia or in Bali. So how do you how do you keep your edge? Because that's happened to me before when I was in Arizona. Even though that's still in the states, it's real easy there. Mm-hmm. It's cheap there. It's super nice there. There's no other dogs out there though. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I felt myself getting kind of like complacent. Yeah. How do I'm, you how do you manage that and keep yourself sharp and keep yourself dangerous? I come surround myself with with like minded people on a, mm. on a regular basis. Once I start to feel myself like yo, I'm not being inspired by anyone around mm. me, or I feel like I'm the best all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm like, nah, I need to go yeah. hang out with different people. Right. So on a regular basis. Um, and I just stay in conversation with, with like minds yeah. that are doing things. And I have real conversations with mutual friends. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, what are you doing in your business? What are you doing here? And it's that thing, oh, okay, you just put up those numbers. I need to go do this. I right. need to, like, right. I'm a competitive, like, since I stopped playing sports, I'm like, yeah. I mean, I still, you know, work out, do it. But, like, I, it's what keeps me going. Like, right. I like to compete. I want to be like, yo, these are numbers we doing. This right. is, this is, this, like, so that's what gives me yeah. my my thing. That's dope. 
It's just in you. It's in, yeah. in you. I got something for you, man. I'm gonna give you a care package before you leave. Yeah. But I got a, this product right here, Hydroglyph. I ain't trying to plug it, but fuck it, I'll plug it. But Hydroglyph, like since, all right. So you're on the go. You're mm -hmm. fat. You you have a later time in which you eat. Like I do too. I break my fast at, in the evening, mm -hmm. like five. That's when I eat, right? Yeah. But Hydroglyph is hydration, right? But it also satiates you, so it curbs your appetite. Okay. Keeps you like, like. You know, we all drink water, but water doesn't have any nutrients in it. Yeah. And you need additional nu You drink too much water, you strip yourself of your body of nutrients, right? Mm. Um, so this has all of the sauce in it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Hydroglyph. It's got, you know, the coconut water. Uh, it's got so many incredible... Each ingredient can be its own product. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In terms of hydration and also appetite suppression, satiation, things like that. So this this is something I want I want you to have out there because, you know, I know you be I know when you was in Thailand, I think, y'all was out sweating a lot, training all the mm -hmm. time. And yeah. you know, in, in Medellin, I know it's nice weather as well. Yeah. A lot of sweating and stuff like that. Hydration is so important, man. So I'm gonna give you a nice little care package with some right, hydroglyph. Nah, I'm gonna buy it. Like uh, nah, I'm giving I, I it to you. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. <laughs> right, stop, it, it. stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go Look, buy some more then. I work. I work my ass off to spoil my friends. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I, I know that you would buy it, so I appreciate that. You know, um, but I gotta give it to you because okay. you know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. I, that's the thing. I want you to have it. Like yeah. I'm honored for you to have it. That's the thing. Like when I even in fitness with my content yeah. th the reason why it blew up and i was so sticky was because i'm excited about my training protocol so i'm explaining it all yeah. in the videos versus just working out trying to be cool so people really resonated with it and i'm the same with this product like you know shout out to sean uh over there and my, my boy mark yo we literally literally have the best supplement company in the world be I believe it. Because we're all very creative people. We have different strengths. We all bring them to the table. We push each other, right? We're competitive with each other in terms of adding value to this business. Mm -hmm. That's why we keep rising. You know what I mean? So, and we go, look, I've never been a person of conformity, of obedience, of staying in a lane. That's why I fuck with you. You feel me? <laughs> so I do everything, quote unquote, wrong by society standards but it's right for people you know and um so w the stuff that we're doing is crazy like you you this this product for instance you put a it against 10 hydration products not one of them have the amount of um ingredients that we have in here and and handles the things that this this handles and the same with our protein with planta you know or our pre-workout having mushrooms in it you know what i'm saying adaptogen so you know we're we're there's a huge paradigm shift happening and the, the psyche and the consciousness of people and for me it starts right here with with each person individually mm -hmm. optimizing themselves mentally of course physically which is very important spiritually financially all of those components you know what i mean but each one that i list is very important you know there's times i'm sitting down in here with, with people that are like geniuses in their field mm -hmm. and they negate their health yeah. or you know what i'm saying other other aspects i'm like yo the health is the most important because if you're not healthy you're not good for anybody you know and um one thing i had a, a a homie of mine when i was young when i was in college he was like older but he was like a mentor and he was a millionaire he's the first millionaire that i knew and he was like man and look, I'm a struggling student. Mm -hmm. Car used to overheat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The windows don't roll up, but <laughs> only yeah. when they feel like it. You know, that them, them days. And I remember I'm at his crib. This is a beautiful, big palace. And he's like, man, I trade my life with yours any day. I'm like, well, what? You're crazy. You know what I'm saying? Why would you say that? He said, because you got health. He said, when I'm, when I'm in pain, my money does nothing for me. I'm like, damn, that should put, it put everything in perspective. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That man tried to take his life before. Mm. because of the pain that he's dealing with because of his health you know what i'm saying so people got to really love themselves enough to to optimize themselves on every level yeah. it starts with your, your your body your mind or mind and body is all the same it's all one but it starts right here with us and then we have to build on on everything else um and that's one thing i like about you too is like you you make a lot of money mm. you, you you're very busy but you fucking you train 
you 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 take all of these things serious you know what i'm saying your health your eating and you know sometimes you live in like a, a rock star you got to yeah. count you got to counterbalance that you know what i'm saying you got to have a heavy counterweight to offset you know fun you know what i'm saying uh, it's, it's it's i think that's actually probably one of the biggest it's like one of like one of the reasons i admire you like most is like you know you work but your your discipline to your you know your physical um regimen i'm like that is something I aspire to be. Like, my brother, I, actually, I think how I first, um, shout out to my brother, Mr. Abnormal Fitness. That's my guy right there. Right? That's Yo, like, is he taller than you? Uh, he's about an inch taller than me. Okay. I seen one picture. I thought he was shorter than you. But I seen one picture. I'm like, yo, he's like a giant. Because <laughs> you tall. I'm yeah, like, all right, yeah, that's yeah. what's up. That's dope. Um, and, like, he was, you know, he's, he's very, he's in the gym three hours a day now. He's in perfect, perfect health. Right. Yeah. And... I was like, man, while traveling, mm. and so that's that's something real special too, right? Because sometimes it goes like it's like a wave, and mm. everything is about consistency. So that's something I really love, and just like the knowledge that you share. Um, but yeah, without health, anything where it's like you know starting to meditate, all these different things, and you know less alcohol. Like sometimes I drink too much alcohol, and I'm like, oh man. Mm. But now it's like I'm, I'm like really conscious of mm. like. Like, yo, what's the goal? What am, what right. am I trying to accomplish? Right. And, um, yeah, have fun every now and then, but it's like that competitiveness of, like, do I want the two extra drinks or do I want to be outside, you know, feeling great with my shirt off, right? Because everything, that's the thing I love about health. You can talk, 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 but you can't bullshit your way. You can see what time it is. <laughs> yeah, for, facts, facts. It's interesting you say that because there's times, it's crazy, man, because... All right, the, the number one killer in this country is heart, heart disease, right? Mm -hmm. And the top five, all of the, the, the reasons that people die is all related to food and a lack of physical activity. Now, when I'm in counsel with people sometimes and I'm talking to, 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 to the people, like one-on-one, -on -one, and cat can be, you know, yeah. obese, overweight, uh, and I'm like, yo, do you get your blood work done? And they be like, they be bullshitting me because I know the whole, I do blood work twice a year. You know what I'm saying? Now that I'm on hormone replacement therapy, I do it every month. Mm. So I know the protocol, right? So like, Yo, you do your blood work? They be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's smooth. Everything's smooth. I know I'm big, but everything's smooth. I'm like, it's not, bro. Because one thing about it is holding uh, fat around your midsection, your belly and your waist, is a visual indicator that you're diabetic or pre-diabetic or about to be. Mm. You're down the street from a heart attack. You know what I'm saying? So... And cats, they really be so, like, I don't know if it's embarrassed or it's a little bit of ego. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I think it is embarrassment that people are not on top of their health. They just want to, like, tell you whatever. I'm like, yo, that's not going to help you, bro. And here's the thing. In 2000, my first time getting my blood work done, 2015, mm -hmm. right? I was big. I was 250. Solid muscle, right? Mm -hmm. I was eating a lot and training my ass off. I was eating way too much and got my blood work done. The doctor said, all right, you are trending towards becoming pre-diabetic. I'm like, what? So I understood then like, yo, your body don't care about how much muscle you got. Yeah. You two, you six foot, 200 pounds. I mean, 250 pounds. Yeah. It's too much. You know what I'm saying? So that's when I, it, it, it really um, lit a fire under my ass to stay on, first of all, to stay on top of my blood work yeah. because here's the thing if something's off you can fix it how do you so quick question hey doing so mm -hmm. like if i so i'm leaving in two days well, like what do i go search or what do i go do to go go do blood work so like let's say i want to go do it in la tomorrow yeah. all right so a lot of these laboratories sometimes they, they take like a week to to get your results i got a spot where i go yeah they can if you went today they give it to you tomorrow okay you know what i'm saying it's over here I could, you could probably go today if you wanted to. I, I, they, I, they're my guys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, they'll hook it up for free. So you need that. Mm -hmm. That you need that. Look, we got our our bank info, our yeah. our everything apps on our phones. You know, when you get your blood work, they send you send you a PDF so you have it. That should be on our phone too. That's mm -hmm. more important than our bank account. You know what I'm saying? So it's important. So so why t tell people to do that and stay on top of it? Because if something's off, calibrate it. You can yeah. fix it. Because all of the things that's killing people is preventable. We can we can walk it back. People yeah. are walking back diabetes. They're walking back 
depending on how far they are with their heart issues, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So we are we should be our own doctors. Mm -hmm. See, when I be speaking um on social, I talk a lot about sovereignty, about being free, all of these things, right? And this is why I say that about myself. I am a free thinker, I'm an independent thinker, I'm not influenced by any entities, right? Other than God, the most high love. That's it, right? And I say that because I'm confident with the things that I know and the things that I can figure out. So that's with my mind, that's with my body, that's with my finances, that's with everything. So with that being said, I know if I'm doing something that's not conducive to a good life or good mm -hmm. health or whatever. And when I say good life, it's all of those elements that make a good life. Your health, your finances, your mind state, all of these things, right? Relationships. So if I want a good life, I got to make sure these things are all on point. So, you know, and sometimes... I'm doing things to give myself a bad life, yeah, yeah. but I know it yeah, and I yeah, correct it like you, right. yeah. and I correct it and I've done that before. So, but the health is, is, is something that we control, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I control mine. I never go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, the last time I had to go for something, I forgot what it was. I remember I did, I knew what it was. I did all my research. I knew what needed to be done when I got there. When he was about to go back to the book, because that's what they do, they go look it up. I already had it for him, yeah. and they respected that. I got mad doctor homies, surgeon homies, all of that shit, right? So, and we talk all the time. So, that's the thing. Like, how I live my life is wherever I live at, I dig my heels in. All the places that I frequent, that I go to, I treat everybody good so they know me. Yeah. Um, I try to... I know people at the police department. Mm -hmm. I, I I try to know people in on the political space. I don't know anybody here, but I know people in other places. Um, the school board, because I got kids, you know what I'm saying? Um, doctors, they're all my homies. So, you know, I, I, I dig my, it's like mycelium or, or, or the roots of a tree. It just yeah. spread out underneath the ground. You don't really see it, but it's connected to everything. That's what I try to do. So... Whatever I need, it gets done, it gets handled. You know what I'm saying? Never lacking. So I live my whole life like that. But especially where I'm at in my community, I really dig in and understand everything and, and, and everybody. But I am very interested at getting off the grid for a while and, and you know, experiencing different places, countries for extensive periods of time. Because I've done it before. Mm -hmm. But my whole situation was a lot different back yeah. then. You know what I mean? So, but this would be this would be this would be kind of dope right here. You yeah, know what I mean? No, I think it's when you're traveling. For me, it was uh, a lot of fear, right? Fear of unknown. Mm -hmm. Am I gonna meet people? Um, am I gonna be safe? Uh, am I gonna have fun? You know, what are the accommodations? All those things. And now it's like a. It's second nature to me when I, I could go pretty much anywhere in the world. And I, and I, I use common sense, too. Mm -hmm. Like, when I go and I ask people, I'm like, you know, I take them like, yo, I play, this place is not the, the play to go. Or it was like when we went to Haiti, mm -hmm. right? I'm not just rolling up to Haiti um, by myself. Because I'm like, nah, like, it's, it's, not, it's not the spot to do that. You right. want to go with certain people. But yeah. there are a lot of... There's a lot of other places that you can go. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one of the things. I just try and give people a real perspective of what, what you're going to experience, right. what to watch out for yeah. when you go to a place. And I just, I feel so much pride when people come up. People come up to me in the streets every day and yeah. be like, bro, I've been to this place because of you. I've, yeah. Done, yeah. I've been here. And that is i'd love people to you're, go for you're a long term. you are a legitimate resource of information mm -hmm. before i knew you i'm tapping into you for traveling because look uh, one thing about me is we're, i'm a hotel snob yeah. so whenever i book somewhere like i look up or i'm about to book x room i go and look it up on youtube mm -hmm. I don't know why, but there's somebody that has recorded a tour of every <laughs> I that, I every that, yeah. room in the fucking world, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'll be doing that. It'd be like three views, but I'm like, thank you. It's yeah. for me. You know what I'm saying? But you give very in-depth information on a lot of places that I've looked up. That's how I found you to yeah. begin with. And I just followed you. I'm like, bro, I dig your shit, bro. That's oh, dope. Man, I really feel the love from you yeah. when, like, um, you know, a real genuine love and appreciation. And so it feels good, right? When... You know, and I, you know, I watch your stuff, um, and just being around you, it's like, 
Yeah, from your peers, getting getting respect from your peers is um, no, that's a, that's a that's major. It's for, like yeah, yeah. It, just, it just feels good. And one of the things I just want people to experience more of the world. Mm. You could almost say it's accidental how mm. uh, I started seeing the world and staying out longer because because I had I had some friends. They're like, yo, we, we want to take a trip to um, to Thailand, and that was like one of the big trips where we're gonna do six, uh, three months in um, in Southeast Asia and then go to Europe. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, <laughs> the fuck am I doing out here? I'm like, right. there's monks walking down the street, right, 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 right. Seeing all this different culture, I'm like, it, it blew my mind. And then I realized how common. Um, pe- like how similar people are around the world. Right. They they want a lot of the same stuff. They they more similar. And then the thing I had as a black man, I was I didn't know how I was gonna be treated. Or I might read, I might Google this one place, and there's one mistreatment of right. of a black person. Like oh, they treat all black people. Yeah. And a lot has to do sometimes Which, with your energy, your personality, yeah, yeah. your personality, your energy. Mm-hmm. Or like I go, I have a great. Someone said, like, um, recently, they're like, yo, you can have a passport heavy video, but your vibe is sold separately. Like, they're not going to have okay. the same yeah. experience as you because your vibe is. That's a fixed mindset type of person. <laughs> That's a self defeating type of person that think that they are going to get treated bad. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because they they're not saying real. In, even in a po- They were saying it in a positive way, though. Oh, okay. They were okay. saying, like, you know, you can have a good time. But you you talk to people when you go out. Oh and yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, you, know, you create you create the vibes. And uh, but I just tell people as long as you one thing about you, I'm sorry to cut you yeah. off, bro, but you know how to calibrate the energy. Mm-hmm. You are a bearer of good energy. You know what I'm saying? And that's part of why you have such a magnetic attraction. Why people fuck with you so tough, yeah. right? Like we was uh, we was at my birthday dinner, yeah. and my bro, you know, he's in there. Nice young lady accompanied him. Two nice young ladies walk in like, oh. Just enthralled by, you know what I'm saying? I think one of them saw saw the show, and she was just like, she she stood in front of the girl. Yeah. I'm like, yo, she about to get stabbed, yo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but she was so into you because you give so much personality and so, yeah. this is the energy. You know, you already know what it is, bro. Yeah. You, you got that thing, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people, you put yourself out there by doing your show, you know what I'm saying? And the show is just the tip of the iceberg of the things that you give people the things that you have to offer the resources that you the resource that you are yeah. and people really yo y'all really need to tap into my guy because it's high level information you know what i'm saying it's high level information even in your show it's it's a uh, that's information it's also entertainment and that's high level too you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying so everybody in my house is tapped into to passport heavy you know what i'm saying so it is what it, it is what it is bro it's mad mad interesting it, even if it's a place I'm not even planning to go to, it's yeah. dope to watch it. You always have the vibes in the video, yeah. the ladies. Oh my God, <laughs> how do you do that? You know what I'm saying? It's like where you get these people from. They're incredible. You know what I'm saying? But you know, when I when I see like I pop, I pop, I pop one on, I'm like wow. Every time, like, <laughs> my man is living, bro. Like my man is living. I love that. I love to see good people touching on these highs of life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you just got to go do it. That's, That's it. Fact, man. That's life is what you make it. Life is what you make it. Life is short. Um, life is not promised. Like, I've had quite a few people, you know, leave me prematurely. I'm just always reminded of... That's, like, what's inside my spirit, bro, is just, like... Sometimes you feel something inside of you. Uh, sometimes it takes like some external factor to push you over the edge to make this change because you said that earlier you said yo as far as I know we only have one life here and you know it might sound cliche but it's really not when you get to the end of your life you don't want to have a life full of yo what if I would have really took that chance on me and so like the and that um What's it? Cole says in one of them, one, of, one of his lines, he's like, "What if you the one, but you the only one that knows it?" And that's the shit that like, wow. it, it gets me. I'm like, I can't. What if you're the one, but you're the only, only one, one that, that knows, knows it? it? And I'm like, that's why it's like, even if I if I fumble, I fail on some stuff. Do I it. can't. I can't let I that got, die inside of me. You know, I got. You know, you know, a mirror. Yeah, of that's course. a mirror. 
Amir, that's my brother. Amir is the most talented person that I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. But he's real reserved. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, you need to get out there. You need to put put whatever you everything that he touches. Yeah. He, he is such a valuable asset to us, my business, like to so many people, right? Because he provides like he's a he has savant like intellect. You told me the wall. Woman. Yeah, he does all of this. <laughs> savant like intellect with anything creative and technical. Mm -hmm. Usually a technical and creative don't go hand in hand. Yeah. But with this guy, he gets both, yeah. right? He taught himself videography out of necessity and got exceptional at it. You know what I'm saying? Music. I watched him teach himself different instruments. You know what I'm saying? So he needs to be out there more. You know what I'm saying? And I need to I need to get my, my, my brother out there more. You know what I'm saying? That's that's but, the biggest thing, bro. Yeah. It's like if you watch him and you've got that feeling inside of you, it's like I always say, what's the worst that could happen? If I do try this, and I'm not being respect, is this hurting or you know, disrespecting someone? If yeah. it's not, Run it. I'm like, yo, and that that's the crazy thing. It's the people that actually take the chance on themselves yeah, that make the stuff happen. There's people way smarter. Way, but I'll be seeing these dope ass people. I'll be like, yo, how the f are yeah. you not doing yeah. more? Yeah, me. Oh, people look, they come around. They're like, bro, I. I <laughs> like, like, yo, the way yeah. I, I type my text message, like yeah. I can barely even write right, sometimes. Right, like, right, I, right. like I feel you. what the hell is he trying to say? Right, right. But that's just like, man. Nah, that's that's the thing, man. It's and there and then you also seen this, I'm sure. People who it's like, how did you get here? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But they 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 believe in themselves and they go out there and they do it. So the moral of that story is, listen, I try to tell people all the time, like, yo, love yourself. You do you love yourself? They're like, yeah. I'm like, do you really love yourself? Because if you did, you would not have any of this bullshit negative self-talk. You tell yourself positive things. You be, turn that crazy switch on in your head. Because I do. You know what I'm saying? Even in the gym. I say certain things. I've been saying them for so long. I just say it. It just, it comes off my, I'm about, my neural pathways are designed in a certain way to be overly confident about everything that I do. I'm like, hey, I got to do it. I got it. Yeah. yeah. Well, Watch out. And then I'd be like, it's fucking easy. I know this shit gonna be hard, but I psych myself out. This is fucking, this is embarrassing that y'all gonna watch me lift this little ass shit. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, it resonates. The subconscious mind takes that and makes it a reality because it doesn't differentiate truth from false. But as far as I'm concerned, it's truth. Hey, if I'm saying it, it's truth. You feel me? Live it, bro. And I'm going to go and do this shit until I die, until it breaks me. You know what I'm saying? I had this mind state I developed when I was young, when I would be doing boxing tournaments in different states when my mm -hmm. father wouldn't be with me. I was always, like, in sh good shape, right? So, and I was, I was mad skinny, but I always had broad shoulders, mm -hmm. and it was round. So, I looked like, like, just like a beast to everybody else. So these coaches would be pushing me harder than their own kids. I, I, I would recognize it as a kid. I'm like, trying to break me. And in my head, I'm like, the only way I'm not going to complete this is if I pass out. Because yeah. they ain't going to call my dad saying I didn't finish this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I never passed out. But I got that kind of mentality. I will do this. Can I do it? Yes. And I'll try until I can't do it no more. You know what I'm saying? It's the only way I won't complete something mm -hmm. is if I physically can't do it and I, I fall. I've never experienced anything like that to make me just fall. I, I fucking handle that shit. But that's, I, I always say this, I manhandle life. Mm -hmm. And I try to put that spirit and that energy on other people mm -hmm. because we can all do the shit. We can all do the shit. Bro. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, and I want a world, a society with a bunch of capable men and women mm -hmm. is the ideal. So, yeah, I do want to help empower other people. You know what I'm saying? Because when people are not strong, and they're weak. They do weak shit. They do backhanded shit. Mm -hmm. They lie. They deceive. They cheat. You know what I'm saying? When people are confident and powerful and they're in their own divine energy, it, it's, it palms up. Yeah, this is what I'm playing with. This is what I'm dealing with. I ain't got nothing to hide. You know what I'm saying? I ain't afraid of nothing. I'm not intimidated by anything. We can all collaborate together. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't have this me, me, me energy at all. My whole life is is always t my team, the team, the fam. You know what I'm saying? And and I've been you you locked in with me forever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And everybody that I'm friends with, we've been friends for over 20 years. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the most beautiful things I've 
from you, like just observe. Like I, I take so much from just observing people, right? Mm -hmm. Versus what they say. Right. But when they words actually match up with what they, I'm just like from the first time I met you, like yo. We gonna be doing this. We gonna get this. We working towards this bigger yeah, warehouse. Yeah. We do, we working towards this. Boom. Couple years later, doing this. Right. Boom. 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 Yeah. Boom. And so, yeah, war, it's like word is bond. I'm right. like, yeah, your word you, actually carries. It has like, to be. I was raised on that principle. You should give your life before you break your word. You know what I'm saying? And and here's the thing, I've like I've dove into a new space, new area for my career that I'm not good at, but I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm like riding the buck until I can fucking control it until I get good at it. Cause I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I see me getting better. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to, I'm going to get good at it. I'm going to master it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the confidence that I have. Like we were talking about the other night, that being, being, being their confidence, baby. You Yo. know what I'm saying? There's nothing that I can't accomplish. It might take me a minute to, to completely figure it out. And remember when I asked you, like, yo, help me with marketing for mm -hmm. XYZ. You're like, nope. I'm so glad you said that. Because what I've, like, so with Ambrosia, we figured it out, right? It's like, I have to do it myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I have to do this shit myself. And that's what I've been learning because I've come across many people that are like the guy for marketing. They'll hop on board and they're not doing anything special. I'm mm -hmm. like, it's about mastering your own shit. It's not rocket science. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just doing it. Keep, oh, that didn't work. Oh, that worked. Let's crank that up. Calibrating your shit as you go along. And then it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to go. Like, we're going, we're going crazy right now. The only reason we're not at 100 million yet is because we keep selling out a, a product. And that's something we're working on right now, too. You know what I'm saying? So, sky's the limit for everything, as far as I see it. It's only up. It's only up, baby. I like. It's only up. I'm just so proud of you, bro. Appreciate like, it. And the squad. Like, appreciate it's, it. And it's that's so beautiful just to see. You know, you t I walked in the building, I was like. <laughs> motherfuckers really doing it yeah. <laughs> like, like we're really it, doing it and you're consistent it's like when I hop on social media consistent yeah. Every everyone's looking for the secret formula and I'm like yo are you actually working like you, you said it so the, the secret formula is consistency. consistency that's it yeah man no it's showing up it's showing up in boxing right there's a thing when like like, sometimes guys go out there and they're just coasting along or whatever. And when it's, a, when it's a guy applying pressure, like, walking to you all the time, it wears you down mentally. Mm -hmm. It's like, those guys, it's hard to fight, right? Even if they're not that skilled, they just keep coming. They just keep coming. That's life. Like, showing up, consistent, posting content, more content. I still respond to the comments. Mm -hmm. I do all of that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, people always ask me, like, who runs your, your social? Like, me <laughs> I, all of them you know what i'm saying now of course i got people in all of them as well but it's me like the the, the brains behind it you know what i'm saying the heart behind it so a, a person that's running their business has to be the ultimate practitioner or what are you really doing you know what i'm saying so i got a quick question yes, um so when it comes to that like always being so it's like as high level as Zuck, like in the business, that, but do you see yourself um, building it to a level where having a structure where you don't need to be there? Like, um, all right, no, I'm gonna tell you why. Yeah. Yes and no. So there's a lot of things I don't need to be hands on with, yeah. right? There's a lot of things that I just absolutely don't wanna do, mm -hmm. right? But the special things, I gotta do it. Like content, I gotta do it. Copy, I write my own shit. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I have a guy that's my guy that I work with, yeah. but we're both, and I'm such a hands on guy, I'm like, I need something for this. Yeah. But I'll write something too. Yeah. And I'll compare the two, and I, I always like mine better. So, you know, he's still out around. Yeah. I just never use his, his stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I go to him for a resource sometimes. If it's something very laborious, like I need help with this, yeah. but I just got it. I got it. My brain works too good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Straight up. And I remember when you, when you, I forgot where we was at a couple of months ago. You like, uh, we was actually, oh, we, we was having a uh, thing with, um, with Marlon. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, lunch, yeah. And then uh, uh, open the gym. Right. 
And you're like, bro, I just wrote all this yesterday. I was looking like <laughs> that. Yeah. Let me let so me look, <laughs> let so look, me get so to work. I expanded on that, right? <laughs> That's become a whole different thing. Cause I just kept going. Cause this is how my brain works. I like to I like to satisfy people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm a pleaser. So I'm like, ah, this is not. Let me break this down better. Mm-hmm. All right. This is like say like one of the chapters in this program is emotional resilience, right? Mm-hmm. So I wrote a whole thing about what emotional resilience is. Then I'm like, all right, well, they need to n- learn how to employ, like, yeah. to grow this because you don't, you're not just born with it. So then I wrote a whole other thing breaking down all of these different tactics on how to get emotional resilience, right? Then I had to write, break down each one of these tactics, how to employ and practice these tactics. Mm-hmm. All things that I do, like meditation, visualization, all of these different things, right? So that's just how I am. But, so it's like, it's a book now, right? <laughs> Or it could be. Yeah. I'm just. It's all like just formatted. It could be a book, audio book, maybe a video book. I don't know if that's a thing, but it's a part of a huge curriculum that I've been working on, and it's interesting, man, because it started out with just some like simple little webinar workshop, yeah. but now it's, it's too big for that, and it's it's important. I think it's important because here's here's my superpower. My superpower, like I'm a, I'm a successful businessman, mm-hmm. but I'm not a businessman, right? I just own businesses and shit. Mm. But I'm successful because I'm a solid dude. Mm. I, I have solid relationships. I do good business with people. I'm fair. I think I'm generous. Mm. And and I'm, I'm honest. And I think I'm a solid foundation of a person. Mm. And that allows me to become very successful. And the shit don't stop. So what I'm teaching in my this, this whole people entering into their divine nature is... Is just like getting re back, recalibrated to like your own sovereignty, thinking for yourself. Mm-hmm. And you have to trust yourself before you can think it's for yourself. So you have to trust yourself by employing certain things for yourself, by yourself. So it's just sturdy. You're a solid person. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people don't trust themselves. That's why they go to the doctor yeah. or they got to ask, uh, call the cops for this or, you know, yeah. I can't. Uh, like, nah, I can do everything. That I need to do. I, I realize that about a lot of people is like they really don't trust themselves to do a lot of things, and yeah. they, they look to other people for for guidance. Mm-hmm. Now I was like, "Whoa, this is actually a lot of people do not Most. actually trust themselves." So I think that's probably one of my superpowers too. I'm just like, yeah. "Yo, I can I can do this. I just get right. out of my way." But one question I have for you is: you're talking about that billionaire confidence. One thing that gave me confidence when I came up, I had a mentor when I was like 17. Uh, his name is Don. He's out in Arizona. Mm-hmm. And I spent time with him. And I used to think this man used to walk on water, right? Like seeing him from afar, right. listening on calls. And then I hung out with him. And I was like. He was underwhelmed. Yeah, so I, th- I thought there's there's like there's, there's more, <laughs> right, there's right, more right. smart guy like yeah. like like uh, I respect him greatly, yeah. but I guess because I, I was never around, like I didn't know I've never been to a million dollar crib before, like right. I've never been, um, and I was like, that gave me confidence. Where is he now in regards to you? Like, who's doing better? Uh, I'm I'm doing financially. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing okay. better than him financially. Yeah. Now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, so I won't say his last name, yeah. but how he fell off was he got too um, too comfortable and, and with the party life. And then he went, he also went through a divorce, right? And in that moment, so this also how, this is to understand the financial of how much he, he went from about $400,000 a year, right? to making about seven, eight million dollars a year. Mm-hmm. And it happened in a relatively short period of time. You created this like system online and then had an office, 200, he had like 250,000 a month in like overhead. Mm-hmm. But, and then when I man, he's like, yo, he's like, man, I ain't been to the office in eight months. Like, I don't really know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. and then he was out partying, doing mm-hmm. this. And that's the one thing about momentum mm-hmm. that always shook me mm-hmm. is, 
sometimes you can't get that momentum back once yeah. you the, the rope too far, and then you trying to yeah, and yeah. I would, that shit terrified me. Yeah, bro. I was like, this man had you know the million dollar crib. He had the drivers, three maids that right. was at the crib right. um, that would come all the time, and it got so bad to a point where because then his overhead and then um, the system, the business went like uh, it went bust, mm. and then so his expenses were still oh, high. Wow, yeah, and then he couldn't afford, and then he was taking out loans. And then it got to the point it's where, slope. Told, like, like, yo, his car got declined. That literally, like Burger King, it wow. got it got that bad, and it just that's all. It's always stuck with me yeah. to like, yo. What does he do I'll now? What does he do now? Um, he's still trying doing different, trying to get the th things back off the ground. Like, but it, yeah, it, it's, it's not. not the same. It, it's yeah. not. Um, and what would you say? So seven, eight a year. What would you say he's at now? Just to put it in perspective, because some people watch him may like think a couple that, hundred, maybe, mm, may, maybe like make, making six figures, something like that. Right now, coming from making seven on up, that's poverty. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I know he's feeling that shit. Yeah. When you're used to a certain lifestyle and you don't have it no more. It's like because you get used to a certain thing and certain quality of life, a, a certain quality of life, and so you don't want to regress. It's like someone who's like, yo, I'm, you're just used to this thing. It's no matter what stage you're in mm -hmm. life, if someone takes a, that away, mm -hmm. you're like, and you don't know how to get that back. Right. That's <laughs> that's um. But my, that's my, crazy, my, yeah. back to the original point, it was just I just he gave me that inspiration just being around him. And he also spoke life into me. I give him so much credit right. for like where I am today. Right. Um, and I'm like, if people surround themselves with some people, you'll realize they're no different than you. And you're like, yo, you could be great. And I, I see that. And when I see that in some people, I see more in a lot of people than they've seen for themselves. Like yeah. I, I have so many people. I haven't created the millionaire, yeah, because th they have to do the work, right, right, right. But I can't even count on both hands yeah. how many people have come around me mm -hmm. and now are doing such miraculous things because they're just like, yo, your bro, just a normal ass dude, mm -hmm. but with some consistency, right. and just leaning into his superpower. It's see, it's the consistency, and it's also that ignition mm -hmm. starting, start, just do it, just go, you know. Like, I got people around me that I love to death that will study till they die. Uncle T. Uncle T. You know what I'm saying? The study That's forever. Like Kanye say. Look, He's like, T TB, <laughs> TB studies and shit for a year. I don't know, are oh, yeah, I already started it. And da -da 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 -da. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that's him. He's pragmatic. Just even when we, cars. Like, if I want to get a car, I just go buy it. I don't even test drive it. He talks shit about me all the time. <laughs> but he test drive. I, I, like, you annoying these people, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, nah, not today. I don't do that. I just go I just go get it. If I know I want it, yeah. I, I, I just go get it. But I'm like that. I'm just, I have an, a sense of urgency to live my life. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it was when I was a fugitive, right? Because, look, every day could have been my last free day. Mm -hmm. So I had to live. You know what I'm saying? So that kind of got reprogrammed myself, right, in a sense, to really live on 10 right responsibly but also i think coming from a place of like growing up where i grew up you know we was rich when i was a kid and poor you know what i'm saying so it's like shit you shit ain't promised my father always said a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush you know what i'm saying but sometimes you can like construct a plan solid enough to get that, that two in that bush and I'm down to go for it sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I'm a risk taker. I don't care about losing because I've lost before and it wasn't that bad. Yeah. I get it back. And my mind won't allow me to sit and loathe, loathe myself and cry about anything. Yeah. I was, fuck it. It just happened. No biggie. Let's get back after it. Let's go. You feel me? That's that emotional resilience. And see, that right there in itself is a superpower. And pe people got to understand that. Your perspective is everything. Is everything. I'm gonna give you an example. One time, I don't know who who I was with this day. We're, we're in Miami in my old building. Lived on the 43rd floor. It takes mad long to go upstairs, especially on a Saturdays. People coming in and out. Mm -hmm. One of those days, it's hot. 
whoever I was with was just the whole I'm like, bro, listen, you don't own this elevator. It's gonna keep stopping. Just ride, bro. Cause you're making yourself have a bad experience and everybody else in here mm. with these sound effects. It is what it is. Let's go. That's my my my, my uh if I can't control little things, ooh, what the fuck? This is a big deal. Just ride it out. It's not that bad, you know? But people why do you think people are so easily rattled? It's not we don't have a culture. People like us are trying to create a culture mm -hmm. with people that follow us of resilience. Yeah. Why do we not have that innate culture in this country of, of resilient people? That's a great question. Um, and I feel that's probably one. Of, that's what people tell me is one of the most attractive things about me is that stuff don't bother me. Like even it could be whatever stuff that gets people all bent out of shape. Mm -hmm. I'm like, can I change it? Yeah. Is it easy fixable? Yeah. Like why am I going to get upset? I don't know if that's something I'm trying to, I've been trying to figure that one out. Is that something mm -hmm. I've learned over time? Uh, but it's also the thing of, I do control my own universe. I don't live in anyone's that's universe. Right. Yeah. I control pretty much every, no one can tell me, what to do as long you know like I always say as long as I'm staying within law and like um, not doing I was like nobody can tell me nothing mm -hmm. um, I get to go where I want do what I want and I bring the people around me um, that I want and so that's why stuff don't stress me and I don't, I don't have a you know I don't have a boss I don't have uh, if I don't like something I move it outside and then but when crazy things do happen I say, I mean, just internally, let's say, for example, someone come hit my car. I'm like, damn, I, I suck. It's an accident. <laughs> it, it, it was yeah, an accident, yeah. right? The only time you can really get me bent out of shape if you intentionally being disrespectful right, to right, me, right. then we're going to have a problem. Yeah. But other than that, that now I feel like that's a different level of problem. Mm -hmm. But most things, I'm just like, yo, why are you stressing? Like, there's gonna be another flight. Yeah. There's gonna be another this. There's gonna be that. <laughs> like the food. Like, I be tripping. I trip out on people <laughs> in traffic. Uh, uh, uh. I'm like, bro, I don't know you. You don't know. I'm not trying to give you a bad day. Yeah. I'm just trying to get by. You know what I'm saying? Cut you off. My bad. You know what I'm saying? People are so emotional about everything. I'm like, y'all should be exhausted. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you're so angry. I feel like we should not have horns on cars. It should be a, like, <laughs> Yo, it, it sounds mom, so, I it sounds so mom, aggressive. Chill, I tell my dad is. the same thing. I'm like, I'm like, Pa, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> he don't know. He, it wasn't intentional. Uh, it, but, and the horns are so aggressive. They, oh, my, there should be like oh. an excuse me horn. Like, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> the motherfucker's like, hey, motherfucker. It sounds like violence. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But nah, but nah, that's a, the mindset, that's probably, not probably, that's one of the reasons why we connect the way that we do and everybody, or your friends and my friends, we all met and all became friends and, because yeah. everybody kind of had that same energy. Oh, and, and, 100%. It, and it's interesting because when you surround yourself, you're in a bubble of dope oh, people. It's beautiful energy. Right. Like, but then when you're outside of your bubble, you're like, what's wrong with y'all? What is going on? You know what I'm saying? But I, I understand it. And I and I do think that part of like my spiritual assignment is kind of tight, helping to tighten people up, tighten certain people up because yeah. look, I talk like you. I, people feel like, like that about me. Like people come around me and be on their best behavior. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, bro, keep it real. Like, what's up? Especially people that has issues and I'm trying to help them. I'm like, bro, I can't help you if you're not being real with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um i let my hair down i'm a normal dude you know what i'm saying but i just make you know good decisions and i and i like you said i'm super disciplined and consistent about things now people come around me a lot tightened up buttoned up like like bro it's not that serious mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying women too but i feel like me personally you know i i know that the meaning of life is what we decide, what we assign to our lives. You know what I'm saying? And for me, what gives me more purpose is actually 
trying to help level people up and empower people the way that I know how, you know? So it's not anything but that. Not trying to save the world and this and that and starvation and uh Nah, I do what I could do. You know what I'm saying? And I had this notion when I went to college. I used to be one of those ideological people that wanted to change the world, that did want to change mm -hmm. the world. But I'm a, I, I got a pretty good brain. So when I got to school, I'm like, mm, this shit bigger than me, mm -hmm. a lot bigger than me, right? So what I came down to was this. I'll do my best to be the dopest person I can. Mm -hmm. Chances are my wife is going to be the dopest person too because she's going to be influenced by me. Our children are going to be like that. My friends are going to be like that. Their friends, you know what I'm saying? And we kind of infect the world like that or empower the world like that. Just individuals being solid, you know what I'm saying? And then surrounding yourself with other solid people, sharing dope ideas, making things greater. Like what makes a nation great like America is the fact that you have a melting pot of different cultures, different ideas that are different coming together making something mm. incredible you know like i look at us like black people here in america right i think we're a lot different than black people in other places mm -hmm. right um we we were treated like fucking shit right mm -hmm. and we didn't die we still here so i think that gave us a certain kind of grit right it's a cinderella story cinderella was treated like shit mm. And look what happened with her, right? And it's kind of like the same thing with us. We were treated like we don't even belong here. And I used to never want to rep this country. But the older I started getting and understanding things more and, and, and doing the knowledge on things, I'm like, fuck that. I'm a patriot, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is my shit. This is my country. And why do I say that? Because here's the thing. My people or people that look like me have been here since before this was a country, for one. My people or people that look like me helped this country get independence mm -hmm. from Britannia, number two. Number three, like when I actually did my genealogy, at least on my mother's side, World War One records, two records, like we mm -hmm. fought in all of the shit. Yeah. Uh, digging my heels in, this is my, this is my America. Yeah. This, is, this is my America, what's up? This is what America look like right here. What's the ideal image of an American? Me, <laughs> you, you feel me? And then, you know, not coming from, I come from, a broken home to an extent crazy shit and still look having the worst of the worst hand dealt still figuring that shit out yeah. i'm like yo that's a flex baby i should not be here you know what i'm saying according to how shit is laid out but i'm here so yeah give me my due this is my shit so i see it like that now like like People, I know a lot of people, it's a big thing with like Ghana, Nigeria now, a lot of black people going back and forth. And I want to go. I haven't been yet. But I don't, I don't, I know it's maybe controversial, but I don't identify as an African. Mm -hmm. I identify as a man that was born in New York. You know what I'm saying? Because um, that's what I know. Mm -hmm. And I've lived all over this country here. This is all I know. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I have knowledge and information about history. You know what I'm saying? But I'm creating history right now. With my family, it starts with me. I'm the one. You feel me? And I, I, that's a huge responsibility for me because I'm putting everybody on with my, my bloodline mm -hmm. and whoever wear my last name. So I'm busy with this. You feel me? Now, will Africa be a part of my story at some point? It's mm -hmm. quite possible. Yeah. But right now, this is it. Right, right now, I'm where I'm at. You know what I mean? And um, I want people like us. It's like, yo... I don't want to hear no bullshit, no they holding us back shit. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear they're holding us back because I'm not better than you. Unless you're going to sit there and say, well, Mike, Rashid, you're greater than me. Don't, you're not going to say that, and I'm not going to accept that. They're not holding us back. They used to hold us back, mm -hmm. but that should empower us. Knowing the fuck shit that they did to us gives me fucking energy. Like a, I'll ne I can never be normal. I can never just coast. You know what I'm saying? I got to be for, as ferocious as I can in every capacity. So when I sit next to them, they're like, they're docile around me. You know what I'm saying? And it always be like that. My meetings, boardroom meetings, all of this shit should be smooth for me. And I'm always myself. I never try to assimilate. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this is, this is the real me. I'm a real one. Y'all know y'all dealing with a real one in here, right? And they respect it. 
Nobody respects someone that tries to assimilate. Mm -hmm. People respect authentic, real people, even if it's completely opposite of you. Yeah. I know I do. I respect the motherfucker that's real. You know what I'm saying? So I take a lot of pride in where I'm at in, in, in the world and in life and the things that I've achieved. And, and what I was saying uh, at dinner the other night was real. Because I was on my way up there, I'm on live talking, and I'm like, damn. I don't even think about shit like this, but I was like, yeah, the whole squad is like millionaires. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Unlikely millionaires, right? And it's like, it's not what y'all think. Or oh, we have to sit up, we have to go be on a yacht or mm -hmm. some, some uppity shit. Like, nah, we're going to go to some uh, upscale restaurant, then we go into the hookah spot. Mm -hmm. Chill, ratchet, yeah. having a ball, safe. Having fun. having fun, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, just real people we real ass people just having a real experience that happened to be incredible. You know what I'm saying? We've touched on incredible things in life. Every, everybody in the squad story is incredible. Individually. Yeah. Collectively, this is crazy. Collective billionaire mind. And I think of what you said, the greatest gift, what I feel like you give uh, and if someone is open to receive it, is mindset. Because uh, you can't change the physical until you change your mental. And, you know, I know life can become better because I can become more, right? I can become more, and that's a belief that I have inside of myself. And I feel like a lot of times when I talk, when you talk to, um, about, a lot of people feel they're at the effect of everything where, oh, this is happening because this happened in my life, this, 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 versus saying, what can I do different to change, um, you know, the outcome? And so, so much value you're given in, if you can understand your mind, anything, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. And that's what changed for me, it's just my mindset of, I used to like think some, and it was just because I guess how, when I, like, the way I grew up, just some of the stuff I was here, and then I started to learn more, where I would be like, man, this person, like, the way some of the people I grew up, they're like, man, this person has, you know, a billion dollars. They should just give money away to, and that's, like, some of the way, like, I used to, yeah, like, think, because, yeah. like, that's how, like, people were talking yeah. around me growing up. They're like, this person has too much. They should just give it away mm -hmm. and to people like us and I was like why? and as I grew up and I was like, like why I don't want to do that <laughs> like I don't want to work hard like or, or yeah. whatever the reason is nobody owes you shit <laughs> and like but that was there was so much of the victim mentality of and if you don't have hope that life can be better yeah. it's like you, you you're stuck mentally and that's why it's so important to be around the right mindset or start adopting the right. And you, and sometimes you got to really go through stuff and break through pain. Yeah. So it's like when I started, I was like, no, we've been going for a minute. But it's like even like my, like I almost know every area code in the U.S. and Canada. People like, yeah, they're like um, homegirl at, at dinner. Uh, I forgot the the guy who does ads with you. I forgot the, the young gentleman. Oh, Jeff. Yeah, his yeah. girl. She's like, oh, I'm from Minnesota. I was like, oh, 952. Yeah. And then she's like, well, how do you know that? You from Minnesota? I was like, nah. But what I used to do back in the day, um, I used to make sales calls. Mm. Um, fucking day in, it was like a $1,000 commission um, thing. And it took me about, like, no bullshit, probably about 1,500 calls mm -hmm. to make my first sale. Mm -hmm. And I and like they're like no you should be making sales within like, a, like at least a hundred. Right, right, right. And I was like, yo, I got bad leads. I got this. You kept going. And then on. the thing is, I was so psyched out at that time because yeah. I was seventeen, yeah. selling products to people who were like my parents' age, yeah. forty, fifty. And yeah. I was like, and so there's there a lot internally going on. Yeah. But I was like, no, nah, I can't. I gotta get. Right. And then a lot of people in that business, they might make. 
30 calls mm-hmm. and they'd be like yo this ain't working like right. I'm done yeah. they didn't develop the muscles that it took yeah. they didn't have that they're resilience not, they're not crazy <laughs> right you know what I'm saying and I saw because I, I knew other yeah. people were doing it yeah. I was like nah bro you gotta I can do it <laughs> that's it bro that's it but it's like having that crazy in you that's like I'm not gonna stop I'm not I've, I've done this much I'm gonna keep going I'm, I'm, going I'm gonna hit going. it yeah. and then I got to the point where like one out of every twenty calls, hit, I can hit, yeah. I can make a sale, yeah. and then from fifteen hundred zero, boom, boom, and I, and I gotta thank my I don't want to thank my mentor. He was like, mm. Nah, keep going, bro. Mm. He's like, Pussy's pussy's like going to stop. He's like, facts, Stop facts. being a little bitch. That's and then facts. I was like, but it's not. I'm like, stop being a little that's bitch. That's facts, bro. Keep going, and um, so and that's where I feel like the mindset is. It's truly it's, everything. It's all mindset because it all starts with that. Think about like the intricacies of the universe. Hell, just of Earth, mm-hmm. of a human, of an animal. How intelligent our bodies are. You know what I'm saying? You get cut, your shit just heals itself. You know what I'm saying? Like the all of the systems of the body. And before anything existed, there had to be some kind of consciousness. Mm. To put everything into place and to order, right? So that's us with our lives. Like, it's it, it, if you just go with the flow, it's going to be chaotic. You need that intelligence to take that chaos and create order, right? To create harmony for you, what's good for you. Yeah. But it takes this. If this is not intact, it's interesting. I watched, uh, I've dealt with people, seem so fucking normal. But I'm like, you, what's, you look smartish. You look normal, but you, <laughs> you're not. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know what, what it is. Is people just so far removed from, I feel it's a, a, a divinity. It's God. People are, they don't have God. Mm. They don't have, and what I mean by God is like all things good, right? All of the tenets of God, love, honesty, respect, uh, being of service, like all of these things, these things I embody. A lot of people don't have that. So what I've encountered a lot is people that they. And here's the thing: like the older I get, the wiser I become. I sit in meditation. I sit in silence. I meditate. That strengthens my brain. I read. I'm in uh, intellectual discourse with yeah. with smart people, with intelligent people, right? Um, I have friends that are physicists, mm-hmm. like Peter Thiel's hedge, ma- hedge fund manager is my boy. He's my guy. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm in, I'm in council with like some of the best thinkers in the planet, right? Mm-hmm. So when I, when people who have never advanced mentally come around me with their like low level shit, it's so crazy to me. It's so obvious. You know what I'm saying? Whereas when I was younger, I probably wouldn't have seen it that fast. You know what I'm saying? Or at all but you know you grow but other people don't grow you know what i mean so just like i'm sure you've had friends over the years that you love but it's just not yeah we in different spaces like mm-hmm. i can't really i don't have nothing to talk to you about no more you know what i'm saying so a lot of people man they don't have they, they're separated from god they're separated from divinity their divine nature and part of that godliness when people be like when certain preachers be like look why y'all want me to be poor? Like, I got a helicopter. What's wrong with that? They really tapped into God, bro. Because God is love. You have to love yourself, right? You're supposed to be poor. He says, I'm doing something. I'm doing something of service. You think I'm yeah. supposed to be poor? No. I'm going to be wealthy. You know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to be wealthy. And I still get out here in the streets and help you fucking peasants that <laughs> you call them that but i'm just saying the people that's criticizing right i'm because i literally do to be in the fucking st- i want to be in the streets helping motherfuckers yeah. in the gutter you know what i'm saying where the shadow people would live i take pride in that i take pride in not being afraid to be in the slums these people just down and out the fuck yeah. we scared of them for you know what i'm saying and it's not that what i'm doing when i go out there is changing humanity it's changing my humanity though it's keeping me grounded, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, in positions that we're in, it's, you know, your head can go up in the stratosphere, 
You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't allow that shit. You know what I mean? For me, you know? So I got to know, like, yo. And I like for me to have that grit with me still. You know what I'm saying? I don't ever want to get... I don't want to, like, look like the money, yeah. if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? I know I look like the money, <laughs> but I don't want to act like the money. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just in a class that doesn't... This, these things don't exist. Like, nah. Yeah. I think it's a flex... Think about Jesus, like like the story of Jesus, right? Jesus was like, in the story, like literally the son of God, right? But who was his people? Ex-killers and thieves and his woman used to be a prostitute. He was a real one, a God amongst men. You know what I'm saying? So that's the energy that I'm on personally. You too, whether you say it or not, (laughs) you just are. You, You feel me? And that's a beautiful thing, man. And, um... Whenever I see you like pop up on social with somebody famous or somebody like crazy, like doesn't surprise me. It's gonna be more and more and more of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So um, I'm giving you your flowers, bro. Thank Cause you you a dope ass person, man. And um, and everyone that I've met through you, I feel the same. You know what I'm saying? So um, you know, it's only up from here. Fuck. It's only up, Fuck. and I really appreciate what you do as far because I found you as just utilizing you as a utility learning about these different places that i want to travel to ghana we should um you should come with me to ghana let's do it bro i'm like, with it um, last year last year i wanted to go with you to um yeah. but i was just not in a good space yeah. you know what i'm saying i'm in such a good space now yeah. i'm so healed and uh like to keep it 100 and transparent with my about me you know we were kind of talking earlier, like, I made a fucking ton of money right before that. And was just, like, living, yeah. impressing a woman. You know what I'm saying? That I was doing things for her that she could never do for me. Yeah. And wouldn't do for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I got and I knew it as I was going along. And I got spanked for it. And I, I deserved it. And, I, and I, it taught me a lot. And I appreciate going through that. I appreciate going through that lesson because I'm so much up from there. You know what I'm saying? My money and my lifestyle and my mind. What I could do for a woman now is a lot different than what I was able to do back then. So thank God I didn't do that then. I didn't have what I have now then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To make the mistakes that I made then, you know? But and it's not even on her. It was me. It was me not using full discernment, being intimate with a woman too early, right? And I talk about this a lot, bro. A lot about me has been changing and metamorphosizing into... So what, um, so what would you say about being intimate too early, and what are your beliefs on that? All right, so I'm speaking for the macro, yeah. not like me and you. Yeah. I'm speaking for people listening, especially the young guys. I think that these men should not be focused on women at all. Mm. They should be focused on building a life and getting their life situated, because here's the thing. Build the kingdom. Having them. sex with a woman, is, it might be exciting to you now because you're young, mm-hmm. But that shit is like nothing like what's next you know what i'm saying and you know some people don't know what's next right so i'll give them what traditionally works right i'm not saying this is for everybody mm-hmm. but what traditionally works is for a man to build himself up to be a fucking leader and a provider and then he find him a wife mm-hmm. and have a kid or two kids whatever right and he have him a wife That's a helper for him. She's going to help multiply what he got. Mm -hmm. She's going to inspire him. She's going to, like, you know, be his his biggest support system and his reason for going out there and conquering the world. Mm -hmm. So your woman can look at you like a fucking, like a king, like a man. And that's your woman, right? Because life is hard. Life can be hard. And the nature of human beings, the reason that we're so successful as a species is because we had that that dynamic, that man-woman dynamic. And we can endure life together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I have a, a vision of my death, right? Um, and my death, like, is, will be like my hero's death. My hero's death, my hero is my grandfather. Yeah. My hero died in a chair just like this, comfortable, at home, with his wife in the next room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? His favorite lady. Not in hospice, not in a car accident, not in a whorehouse nothing crazy at home and he raised everybody look me and my grandfather was like this and i didn't cry at his funeral 
And I'm like, what's wrong with me? Cry. I'm like telling myself to cry. But it's like, cry for what? Salute. Mm-hmm. He did it. He raised everybody. He, he lived a successful life. And my grandfather, grandpa's son, he was the man. His presence was felt whenever he's around. And when he wasn't, you felt his absence. Like, damn. Like, going to my grandparents' house after the funeral just felt, like, impossible. It's impossible for grandpa to not walk in here right now. Yeah. That's, that's impact. That is real-life impact based on what, what he did for myself, my sister, all of my you know, our, our family. So... I, I tell these young motherfuckers like, yo, stop fucking these girls. I'm gonna tell you why. You calling these girls hoes and sluts and all of this shit because we making them like that. Mm. And I got, I can't, I gotta be honest. I contributed to that mm. part of the delinquency of our community, you know. But I try to erase my bads. But these guys fucking these girls with no intent on being with them. They're not even. They're some of them are lying. Like, yeah, oh yeah, I love you. And they don't have sex, just a, you know what I mean? So it's like, where we're at, it's a completely different thing. That's another conversation for how we can interact with motherfuckers. But for, the, for, for most people, it's like, the, the, the protocol should be this. Young man, you know, find your trade, your skill, whatever it is you want to do with your life to make money. Lock in. Lock the fuck in. Like, psychotic with it. Your friends is hanging out, having fun, fuck it. Listen. They're not going to be cool in two, three, four, five, six years. That shit is going to fade. And here's the thing, partying. First of all, y'all young and broke. You don't, you can't party like for real, right? So you're scraping up money together. you borrowing this from this one. This, that's not fun. It's not a vibe. And every time you're doing that, you're setting yourself back. Yeah. Just going out, period, kind of sets you back. If nothing else, your health. Because mm-hmm. being up late, drinking, is taking, is knocking days off your life. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So that's one. But two... You get up the next day, you're not in a mind state of like hustling. You know what I'm saying? So you're just not locked in, right? It's, it's doing so much, like you said, momentum taking you out of the momentum, right? And it's going to position you to be in some fucking cubicle, yeah. paying, living your life to pay bills. You know what I'm saying? It's not the vibes. No woman is going to really fuck with you like that. You might get her, but you're not going to keep her. Because here's the thing. There's, there's a prank channel on YouTube where... They always set up like couples, right? And the girls be... It's like 99% of the women will cheat on their men. And, and the guy that they're cheating with, he's a decoy, but he has a persona of, you know, having th- just in a better situation financially, all of that shit. It's always because of money. Mm-hmm. People don't want to... Don't a woman want to struggle? Yeah. I be, you know what I'm saying? And like what you said about folk, like... Tell I like... Started to get like real comfortable. Mm. I feel like I didn't deserve to really enjoy too much because you speak in my language. You speak in my language now. Like, why should I? Mm -hmm. And then I've always heard. You probably heard the quote: "You're never gonna lose women, right? Chasing money, building money, yeah. Chasing money, but you can lose a whole lot chasing women. Chasing women. Facts. And you only become more attractive." more of an aura the more powerful you become mm-hmm. and it's just it's like i like to have fun like i'm, I'm probably one of the king of having mm-hmm. fun but mm-hmm. to a limit and i, and I yeah. start to feel this unease in my body mm-hmm. when i'm like all right cool i gotta reel it back in because i gotta go get it yeah i gotta become yeah. more pop like I, it's like my sport like i want to mm-hmm. win like that's my right. like i want to feel like i'm improving mm-hmm. my life and yeah when you're young you really got to be focused. Right. I heard a, a quote by, I think it was, uh, one of my favorite um, motivations, never met him, but uh, RIP to the late, great Jim Rohn. Mm. And he said, you should be so focused on building a wall around your family of security that nobody can get through. Mm-hmm. Until then, you got to keep working. Mm-hmm. And so that's my, th- and that's also the thing of like having a, a girl or like having a girlfriend. I've never really wanted to have a girl until I was like, like I could, you know, date some girls, but I never really wanted to 
be in a serious, committed relationship until I was like, yo, I'm, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm good. I don't want to have to be like, uh, no, yeah. I want to be well, well, here's, secure. Think about it. Think about it. Think about some of the issues that men and women have, right? Now, jails are full of men that beat women, right? It's a very common crime, domestic violence, right? Why is that happening, right? Mm-hmm. It's when people... I'm not saying all the time, but a lot of times a man feel like he can't control a woman, mm. right? Well, why does he even feel challenged in that way? Why don't she just submit? Okay, why don't she just submit? She don't submit because she don't respect, respect you. you. She don't respect you because your decision making sucks, right? You don't have your life together, right? You know, a woman is a powerful, women are fucking powerful. I don't give a fuck what nobody say, right? We have to grow and be more powerful to be able to contain a woman, to be able to keep her happy and not like they, they say a woman scorn, right? And nobody can make you mad matter than your girlfriend or your wife. No one can do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's because they got power, right? So, but it's like we manipulate them and then we get them and we can't really maintain them. And that'd be a problem. And you, and that's why dudes be putting their hands on women or lie to her and go and fuck somebody else and lie to her and create a circle, a cycle of chaos. Yeah. And they create these angry women, right? And then they become bitter because these women be tripping the fuck out. But they're not even acknowledging that they, they're the ones who's spinning these women out of control. You know, that's why I say leave these women alone. Yeah. And women and no fathers, I blame fathers. You better, you should be on your... Look, I have two daughters. They will be my responsibility until I hand them off to their husband, whom in which I'm going to vet out myself and I'm going to be close to them, him and his family. It ain't happening no other way. So I be hearing, I meet women and they be in these crazy situations. I'm like, who's protecting you? Who's just letting you out there in the world like that? You know what I'm saying? Why is this young girl over here? You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. where's the fucking guidance? It's no guidance no more, and that shit is egregious. If you got a daughter, bro, you better be fucking her best friend. You know what I'm saying? And be an ideal person, the model that she can like. You better be like my dad. You know what I'm saying? So, so I, I put a lot of responsibility on fathers. You, you say they say, oh well, you put some responsibility on women too. Okay, that's fair. Everyone should be responsible for their actions, and women. Stop being fucking stupid. And what I mean by that is a woman, listen, what's what's a more valuable asset than the vagina of a woman? The love of a woman? Nothing, in my opinion. Yet they will give themselves to a loser. Freely, just go. Or a bunch of losers, racking it up. The stakes is higher for a woman than a man. Because a woman could be stuck with a baby. A man, most of the time, just leave. There's nothing you could do about it. So a woman got to be conscious. Just think about these things. If that man gets you pregnant, are you? Uh, do you think he's going to stick around? Does he seem like a, a solid a solid guy like that is going to stick around? Yeah. Okay, now let's say he is. Does he have the means to financially and intellectually provide for you? You know what I'm saying? And your baby? Can that man create a safe space for you to thrive as a mother? And I have to go right back to work, not to be stressed out about shit, this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? If the answer is no, don't keep your legs closed. Mm. It's that simple. People are making lifelong decisions over some temporary pain. If, just go masturbate. You can't get pregnant like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, focus on this. It's your studies, like getting developing a foundation, Right. People are focused, they're out the gate, they're focused on relationship and love. And love is, is such a not, is not a practical, love is not a practical tenet or thing to base, to base not, a relationship on. It's yeah, not. Not the real world. There's, there's so many real life things that just, I mean, I tell people not to live in a fairy land. I'm like, as much as people don't like to talk about mm. finance and resources and all these things, I'm like the person who's like, money is not everything. Like, I, put your I, mic a little closer. 
Yeah. Just bring just bring it to you okay. a little bit. Yeah. Money yeah. is not um it's not everything. And mm-hmm. I, I truly believe that like in my core. Like my God in light is happiness. Right. Mm-hmm. But there is a certain level like I mean, I live in United States or right. I'm not got live in other places, yeah. right? And for the things that I like to do and to be comfortable, there's a certain level of income that you need. And especially if I'm gonna have a wife, I'm gonna have a kid, all of these things. Women are soft creatures, Mm -hmm. right? They are soft, beautiful creatures. And I really feel like, and I'm I'm still friends with pretty much, like any woman that I've really been with, um, we still, unless like, if I'm like, yo, this is just too much, yeah. probably 95% of the time, right? you know, still talk to them. And I could actually talk to pretty much 100% of them, but I don't want to open back. I'm like, yo, this is yeah. not going to work, right, so we just right, not going right. to talk. But the thing, they're just like, yo, I feel so comfortable with you. Life is life is easy. Life mm-hmm. is, I feel happy. It's adventurous. It's, right. it's all of these things. And you can't do that in the in the Western world if you don't have... Your house in order, or it's yeah. going to be this up and yeah. down roller coaster yeah. trying to maintain something that you can't maintain. Right. And so, and women, are, yeah, like I said, they're soft, beautiful. And like, and I ask women, I'm like, yo, do you really want to? You really want to grind? Do you mm. really want? Or like, do you want to be like a, a, a mother and you know being taken care of? And that and that's like a very because it takes a lot to raise. Oh, you know, oh, kids yeah. be that, and it's like, mm-hmm. like you know what, really? If I actually had something, someone I could trust to, like, no, nah, I, I would rather, I'd rather be at home. Like, bro, it's it's a beautiful thing. So it's like, this is what we're supposed to be doing. This is how we're designed, mm-hmm. you know, to procreate, you know. But it doesn't stop there because we we are civilized people, right? So we're supposed to. Us, us men, what I said earlier, create a safe space mm-hmm. for our women to thrive as mothers so that our kids could be successful in life, right? Because yeah. that's not, we don't do that. I can't mm-hmm. nurture, no, I ain't nurturing shit. That's not my, I, that's not what I'm good at. I'm good at going out here in the world and hunting and bringing this shit back home. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You handle what's at home. And I got, I got us. Yeah. I don't say no. I don't want to ever have to say no. You know what I'm saying? But just let me provide you with everything that you need to stay soft. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So so we do have, it's a crazy imbalance in our culture right now with a lot of women have to embody tactics of masculinity yeah. out of necessity. You can't be mad at them. Yeah. You know? And I, and I do see, there's content creators that they go hard on women. And I don't think it's fair. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying like, there here go the simp com- com- uh, comments, right? Far from it, you know what I'm saying? But I'm realistic. And reality is this, I can't blame nothing on a woman. If I'm blaming shit, my shit on a woman, then I'm weak. And that woman's stronger than me. You know what I'm saying? I've never been in a situation where a woman controls the temperature in my relationship. We control the temperature, mm-hmm. right? Now, are they going to respect you enough to submit to your mission? That's on you. Are you fortified? Do she respect you? Do other men respect you? When, look, a woman dealing with me, when women, they start posting me, they DMs change. Mm. Like, oh, there's respect. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Oh, man, Mike's a great, you know what I'm saying? That's what we all want. That's what men should be thriving to be respected. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that our women, like you said, feel safe. They can let the, they they got a different type of smile, different yeah. type of comfort and freedom. You know what I'm saying? So I tell the young cats, yo, stop fucking around. I, and I say this too: fuck dating, courtship, marriage when you're ready. Courtship, marriage when you're ready. Like my son, you ain't never gotta leave my house. What do you gotta leave the house for? When you when you found the wife, then it's time for you to get your crib. Yeah. And I and I hope with that. But now, why spend money paying bills? You're not, you're not married. You're, you're young. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's how it is in most parts of the world. It's just here in the West. We've adopted a Eurocentric style of family and romance. And this shit is not, not conducive to me. It's not conducive to them. Because most marriages in America end in divorce. Most of them. 
you don't have this phenomenon nowhere else in the world. You know what I'm saying? Most places, they don't even have a word for divorce. It's like not even a thing. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of places. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, like in Islam, there's no divorce. Mm-hmm. I mean, now, because shit is all modern. Yeah. But, and people can be like, oh, well, how are they treated? They're treated good. Like, I'm Muslim. My family's Muslim. I've lived in the Middle East. Them women got it. They, life's easy out there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Their job is to raise their kids and look cute. You know what I'm saying? And they got nannies and shit. <laughs> it's not even that hard. You feel me? Yeah. So it's like, let a, a man should be a man. In my <laughs> utopian mindset, a man, I would love nothing but to get out there in the field and fucking kick down walls. You know what I'm saying? And find, find the spoils, bring it home. And come to a nice, good smelling home, clean home. <laughs> Kids happy to see me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Woman fine. You know what I'm saying? So, but we got it all, it's all fucked up. Women out working overtime. Women out working overtime, competing against men, getting paid less, getting sexually harassed at work, all of the bullshit. I ain't, I'm not part of this culture. Y'all can have that. Mm. I, ain't, I ain't with none of that shit. No woman in my life is gonna have to, have to compete with men. Yeah. It's not realistic. It puts them at a disadvantage. And people gotta understand, this shit all started, it was just these, it was business owners and factory workers, factory owners wanting cheaper labor. It wasn't for like women's freedom and liberation. That's not freedom. Mm. That's and that's slavery. It's not slavery. It's indentured servitude. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. It had nothing to do. The whole women's liberation movement was grimy. Feminism is the, did women a huge disservice. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was that's that's to increase margins for business owners. You oh. pay the women less, you know what I'm saying? And they still do that. And it's not never gonna change. Just think about the shit that went, bro. When I was, I remember my first job, I worked for Bank of America, fraud department, I was in college. Bro, I'm a horny ass little dude, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We all were, and these girls fine and shit. Everybody's trying to smash. Yeah. I don't want no woman in my life subjected to that bullshit. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Just to get a paycheck and just... You have to fight <laughs> men off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they're uncomfortable. Think about how many women are afraid to say something at work or with somebody that's subordinate to them or over them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The shit that they got to deal with. If y'all want to deal with that, I don't think that's ideal, but, you know. And you have women now, they've got their mind so twisted I don't need no man like yes you do okay good luck you know what I'm saying it's not gonna be fun it's rough (laughs) it's rough out there it's a cold world yeah that's like I don't that's why I say the mindset is I mean it can go a million different ways Mm -hmm. but it's the mindset of and one person can change your whole outlook on everything and yeah just being with you know just a lot of different women um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's interesting to hear the perspective and why certain people or certain women feel the way that they do about a certain topic. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes it's just the situation, right, um, that they're in. Uh, it's a it's a crazy world. It's like it's a crazy world when, but the the general thing of like, how do I make? Like you said, you can't save the whole world, mm-hmm. but I'm just trying to make my world and my people and my world good, and that's you know that's from a, from a mindset. If the whole squad's on the same mindset, the people that I hang around are on the same mindset. That means I'm gonna have a good world around me, and that's, that's like fact. all. That's how I control my universe. Like yeah, there's gonna be little things that kind of come that's in, part of life. And, but like I really don't actually don't have too many bad experiences with people mm-hmm. like with people like oh man you can't trust people you can't do mm-hmm. like, i've generally don't have that many bad experiences with people listen saying it's very easy to you know if the shit don't feel right it don't feel right yeah. it's trust your gut it's that simple you know yeah. i've been someone tried to take advantage of me before in business and i 
It's like no shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You learn. Like, I, this, this but, shit but, happen. but I even felt it going into it. I'm like, yeah. I don't know about this, but fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, but I, these are lessons well, you learned. Feel it though, yeah. but you felt, you yeah. felt it yeah. from the jump. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. Another thing, like what I said earlier, um, for a hot second, people were paying me to come on the podcast, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't really like doing that. Somebody else said, oh, yo, that's another way to make money on podcasts. I'm like, okay. But it didn't feel good. It didn't feel good, bro. It didn't. And I'm like, you paying me to come on here? Like, I'm judging them for paying me. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, I had to stop. I stopped doing that. You know what I'm saying? Yo. See, but see, these are things that people got to understand. It's about character. It's not about money. Not all money is a good thing. It's not. Man. That's also how I stay happy, too, is like, I'm just very conscious of energy. Mm-hmm. Like people offer me a lot of money. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, come do this work with me. Come do this. Come do that. But I'm like, and a lot of times I just don't feel like it. Like yeah. I like my schedule open <laughs> do and to free do. to do. Because also when you commit to someone, mm-hmm. you have a commitment in, in my, like of excellence to perform right. for that. And it's like, if you're not like people overcommit and they say yes right. too much right. and then they can't and then then there's a strain on the relationship yeah. because you can't perform. Right. Right. I got a question for you. Yeah. All right. So and I don't want to keep too much of your time. I appreciate you spending time and sharing nah, time just, and space with you now. Yeah. But what are you motivated by? You know, like because I get pitched all the yeah. time and money does motivate me. Mm-hmm. But the right situation, of course. Yeah. But what are you motivated by? I can tell you happiness. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, like happiness is what I'm motivated right. by. And so I'm always in check with what are the things that make me happy? Like, mm-hmm. I like riding, like motorcycles, right? Mm-hmm. I like nice cars. Mm-hmm. I like, um, I love women, mm-hmm. like, that are of a certain type of intellect, a mm-hmm. certain type of vibe, mm-hmm. right? I like going to different places around the world. I love creating. Mm-hmm. I love telling stories. Like, it, it's fun to me. Like, I genuinely... I see passport heavy a part of my life for my whole life. It's not just mm-hmm. something that I'm doing. Like right. this is, and it, it's going to be chapters to it, right? right? Where it's like, hey, this is the single Jabril, and yeah. you got different, yeah, different. Yeah. And then like I, I have the dream of, like where it's like my dream in the next five years. Like I want to have like you know I call like my life partner, mm-hmm. and um, I want to have like my kids. You know, yeah. traveling, you know, the globe with me, and we right. doing the family thing that's in the episode, right? Like Jermaine, huh? Like, like Jermaine, Jermaine yeah. like that's that that's Shout that's that's Jermaine. the homie. Yeah. Like when you were talking about like minded people and who mm-hmm. he's another. Like I didn't know, like he's a he was an inspiration. I knew who he was. Shout out to Jermaine Griggs, uh, you know his beautiful family. I knew who he was mm-hmm. before he knew who I was, mm-hmm. and then so when I reached out um, or we, we connected, he's like, bro. You're the reason that I took the year. I was like, "What? That's crazy!" That's crazy. Yeah. Like, like you've been an inspiration right. to me right. for, for, um, for a long time. But so, what motivates me is being able to do what I want to do, and then the imp and the work that I'm doing. I'm loving mm-hmm. the work, um, and yeah, and then if, as long as it's competitive, like mm-hmm. I want to be able to be like, "Ah, oh, cool, I can keep growing right, right. in in this," and then yeah. what else? Just being around good people. Like I, yeah. I genuinely value people that don't need anything from me, mm-hmm. right? Um, there's always, I want to be a value and service to people, but mm-hmm. I genuinely like being at comfort with with just the people that I'm around. Right. And like, I made a video one time. I said, why do I like hanging around bosses? Mm-hmm. That's because they don't feel a certain type of way if I if I drive a certain type of car if I do something or if Mm -hmm. they doing something I'm not like yo why'd you like why'd you Mm -hmm. buy that hundred thousand like for me I don't buy watches but I'm like because they want to they can afford it and I think that's some dope like I want to be able to just do stuff without judgment and that takes a certain kind of person who feels confident in themselves Mm -hmm. and that makes me happy right and so it's kind of like a group of friends like I'm very conscious yeah of people, I look at their looks. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I'm look, I'm like, right. and they genuinely cool and yeah. happy. Yeah. You know, they're not like, they're like, oh shit. And you can tell when people are like, yeah, the way they talk about you when you're not in the room, right? Um, right. and so that's what makes me happy. Mm-hmm. Doing things I, I like, you know, nice motorcycles, cars. That's something I like. People are like, oh, that's excessive. 
I ain't bothering nobody. So what? That's, that, yeah. that's, that's me. That's your opinion. It, yeah. it, it ain't it's bothering not you. Not accessible like, to me. <laughs> that's yeah. me, yeah. right? I like to travel. I like to right. travel in comfort. Yeah. That's for me. Right. I ain't bothering nobody. Right, right. Um, and yeah, just good relationship. Make sure my family good. Like, I like to see my family um, and just friends and that's it. Some mm-hmm. nice dinner, like yeah. parties. But yeah. happiness is what I shoot for. And then once things start getting in the way of that, mm-hmm. like, that's when I say money is not everything for me. Right. Like, I could make a bunch of different p- take on things, but I'm just like, nah. Like, for me, like, just on in a practical thing, I'm like, mm-hmm. as long as I, I, for like my personal life, I was like, would I like to fly private? Yes, that's why I'm going to keep building. But I'm like, I'm okay flying business class. Mm-hmm. Like, that, that's okay for yeah. me. Do I want to? Yes, I won't be one of the people like, man, um, no, I yeah, want to yeah, be, who, yeah. I want to be fucking on, the, like, right. but I'm okay with it. It right. doesn't affect my happiness. Yeah. You no, know, facts, so, facts. Yeah. So it's just happiness is my, that's like my North Star. And if it's getting in the way of that, like, I don't really want to see it. That's what's up. My brother, thank you. Thank for you. sharing t- time and space with your boy. You know, I love you to death. I brag about Likewise, you all the time. I love time. you back, bro. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, I do want people to tap into mm-hmm. your travel. Um, uh, what is it called? The so you got travel travel mastery. Tra- travel but mastery. But where people, for me, I'm a, I appreciate, I'm a master marketer. So it's like people, like they're going to come find me. Yeah, for sure. Right? For sure. But what, what I love people to tap in, tap in the passport heavy. Like if you want to feel the energy, feel everything, Go to Passport Heavy on YouTube or come to my personal Instagram, Jabril8. And from there, you can, if you land on that, you're going to get retargeted with an ad anyway. So, <laughs> a fact, you, that's fact. You. Get the yeah. YouTube and then my personal Instagram, Jabril8. And also Passport Heavy on Instagram. But I just want to connect with people. I, right. I, I generally, some of the dopest people I have not met yet. And right. I, I thank God for the internet. Some people mm. are no new friends. Like, no, I make yeah, so weird. new yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah. Like, we wouldn't have met yeah. if I didn't have new right, friends. Right, right, like, right, right. I'm, I'm down. As long as your energy is right. People I'm that down. say that are not happy with themselves <laughs> and they fuck people over. So they have bad relationships with people. So they say these things. But nah, I'm with, I'm, I'm like you. Now, if you a weirdo, <laughs> I'm, look, I don't even avoid them. I play with my food sometimes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, come on in, come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but I, you know, if if you have any level of discernment and some in, uh, interpersonal intelligence and self awareness, you can you you know who's who. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But life is too it's too short to be so limited. Bro. You know what I mean? Now you learn. I know we've talked about money. I kind of want to end with this. There's so much to learn from people from everyone like i really i've had i've learned some of the dopest things and so i, I know f- like financial has been a big thing but mm-hmm. be open to learning from everyone but also be protect yourself like from learning from the wrong people because that will also have the same negative mm-hmm. impact oh yeah um you know from people so it's a simple thing are they living how you want to live and then do as much um, vibe check and mm-hmm. then research like fucking research That's people yeah. and uh, I want to give you your flowers right you have inspired me more like more than you even know mm-hmm. like I watch you from a distance and that's why I even say social media is important where if it's used in the right way I see you showing up all the time where I'm like oh, okay cool I'm going to keep improving business Physically, all right, let me go in. And, Mike is doing this. I want to do that. And just you showing up all the time and also just doing some fly stuff. <laughs> I'm like, yo, bro. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I love it just seeing the consistency that you have. And, and that is a bigger gift than, like, you even know. And then also, yeah, just em- embracing me as a brother and then also connecting with, you know, my other friends. Um it's, it's, it's been special and I can't wait to explore more with you travel more with you can't wait when you know I start having my kids yes, all sir, that yes, so yeah I can, man thank you well received brother yo we about here peace